by facial stone technology, which includes the projectile points I often make on this channel, are not the only technology archaeologists see in archaeological record. In fact, globally, blade and blade core technologies were one of the more common technologies used by prehistoric peoples. A blade is a type of flake which is at least twice as long as it is wide, with relatively parallel edges and usually ridges which are also parallel to the edge. These blade flakes are created by striking a flake to follow long ridges left by previous flake removals. A large piece of flint prepared to allow for a series of blades to be removed is called a blade core, which can often produce many blades. Blades are wonderful cutting tools because they have uniform edges and shapes along with the naturally razor sharp edge that flakes have. Blade and blade core technology first appears during the Middle Stone Age in Africa and during the Upper Paleolithic in Europe and Asia. Early examples of this technology may even date to 500,000 years ago in Kenya and South Africa. While early instances like this would have been produced by hominins rather than sapiens, the use of blade technology is generally associated with modern Homo sapiens and late Neanderthals. These Neanderthals started using a technology around 45,000 years ago called Shadow Peronian, of which blades were an integral aspect. Blade technology spread around the globe to every place Stone Age humans settled, including the New World. This technique was used up into the Bronze Age, and in some special instances after the introduction of iron and steel tools. Archaeological examples of blades can range tremendously in size, from small, thin microblades to large blades big enough to be made into daggers. Unmodified blades make excellent cutting tools when simply grasped in the fingers. As you might imagine, these blades are extremely sharp and can be difficult to handle safely, but you can remedy this hazard by affixing the blade to a handle or by retouching an edge of the blade to make it more blunt. However, blades are perfect blanks to be retouched and shaped into more specialized tools. Whole blades or blade segments can be made into projectile points or side blades for composite projectile points. These can be hafted using a number of different techniques to create many types of tools for various tasks. Blades that curve and have a wider distal end are perfect for being made into end scrapers, which require minimal unifacial retouch. With the onset of agriculture in many regions of the world, blades were set into curved handles to make excellent sickles. Many other types of tools are made from blades, as they are well-suited shape for many functions. When a flint napper looks for a stone well-suited for the creation of a blade core, the ideal piece will be fairly thick and have a platform capable of producing long, narrow blades. Sometimes a large, natural platform occurs on the rock, but often the napper has to remove a large flake, or flakes, to create an advantageous platform like the first flakes I remove from this obsidian core. Usually the first few flakes take advantage of natural high ridges or high spots, and subsequent flake removals follow the ridge left by previous flake scars from previous blade removals. Blades can be removed with either direct percussion, indirect percussion, or even pressure flaking. Those removed with direct percussion tend to be somewhat irregular, and those removed with indirect percussion and pressure flaking more refined. Here, I'm using a moose antler indirect percussion tool, which I'm then striking with an antler billet to produce blades. The most uniform blades in prehistory were done with pressure flaking, such as those made in formative period Mesoamerica and in Western Neolithic Europe. The tools needed to remove such blades were probably large and very specialized, but not closely resembling the pressure flaking tools I usually use. In order to remove blades with pressure flaking, a flint napper also needs some sort of vise or support setup to hold the core in place. As I remove more blades, the core becomes smaller. Eventually, the continued removal of blades will result in it becoming too small to remove any more at which point the core is considered exhausted. Blade and blade core techniques were a flexible tool technology for prehistoric peoples. It was used over a very long period of time all around the world, which is testament to how useful this technology was. 
As to be expected with such a long-lived technology, people produce blades in a number of ways. Cores found in the archaeological record vary greatly, with some being large and others being small, often prepared differently depending on the culture, region, and era. Blades removed from these cores also varied in size, thickness, and uniformity. Ultimately, blades are an example of how ingenious and adaptable prehistoric humans were with their material culture.